Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I want to say a big hello to all the new subscribers stopping in. Thank you. And so what are we going to do this video? Well, I'm not sure. I got a buddy of mine who's needing an outboard, uh, a, a little bit of a bigger outboard than I normally mess with, um, this time of year anyway. He's needing one to put on the back of his boat to go and get some quackers. Quackers. Quack, quack, ducks. He's liking to do that duck hunting, you know. He likes the, the ducks. So he wants to go get some of the, the ducks. So, um, I could possibly get on that if the weather lets me. And then, I got some others in mind. We'll see. But anyway, um, hey, have you heard? Have you heard the skinny? Apparently, if you're trying to get new power, I was talking to one of the dealers here, and I even saw something in a, uh, uh, a magazine that we get up here that comes out called the Bush Mailer. It's sort of like a newspaper magazine, classified thing. Um, but it, it has brand new stuff in there and dealerships as well. And there was even a, a, a write-up in that said if you're looking to get some uh, old, you know, some new power, some 22 power, um, you might have to wait a little while because I guess with the whole COVID thing and the supply chain and then certain models with the EFI that have electronics, chips, whatever in them, um, apparently that stuff, uh, due to lack of supply, labor, whatever, uh, uh, distribution, that kind of thing is, uh, that flyer and a couple people I've talked to it says you better get on a list and better get in line if you want that 22 stuff so okay what are we gonna do this video I don't know but if you know one thing you know I got some outboards need some work on them that's for sure so
I've had a lot of people asking me about my skiff um, or should I say one of my skiffs this boat um, and 13 others just like it were built on the beach literally out at a village on Kodiak called Larson Bay they built 13 of these in a three-day weekend they started Friday morning and had them done late Monday evening in the summertime which you got to remember it stays daylight pretty much all the time in the summer with the exception of a couple hours of dusk so they built 13 of these and you can see at the bow there there's lifting points and towing points and then the same uh, on the stern or some of that the boat is 18 feet long. It's heavy, thick, uh, welded aluminum. These were built back in, I know it was over 35 years ago. And this one is one of three that I know of, and there is only one left that is in the original configuration as they were built they were very short they were only 13 or so feet long maybe even less than that I can't remember but anyway they had to come up with 13 of these in order to get a salmon contract they had to have so many saner boats the bigger boats and skiffs um, same skiffs to pull and close the net in order to get the contract and so they built 13 of these in a three-day weekend. And uh, then this one, just like one of the others that I am aware of, was stretched. You can see the welds right there in the center. That was stretched. Um, so you take out that part in the middle and weld it back together, and that would have been the original size of the boats. They have a towing post. That was for throwing lines from the seine net on and closing up the seine net, is my understanding. And I'm not a commercial fisherman, so... But that's what I understand. And then the people 
ask about the um, the back of the boat, the way the boat sits in a well, the, excuse me, the way the engine sits in, a me in the well inside the boat with you. I think that was done largely so they didn't beat the pieces out of the outboards when they were up against the the mother boat saner, so to speak. Um, at least that's what I think it's for. This is very popular around Kodiak Island. Um, you see a lot of these type of boats that have this, this configuration or something very similar to it. Um, so the engine sits in there like that and um, I think that's just so the engine didn't get beat all the pieces coming up alongside the same boat to drop off the the net and all that kind and pick up the, the, the lines and so forth. But um, like I said, this one's about 18 feet long, heavy welded aluminum, and it's been around for literally decades. And they're good old tough skiffs. I mean, you can run them right up on the beach if you need to and don't have to worry about it. Um, and with that 50, that classic 50, 1983, in the year of our Lord, pushes this thing pretty good. Um, yeah, I can get up over 30 miles an hour with it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with this little setup I got on there. So that's the story on my welded skiff. Um, good old boat. Tough as nails. Good beach boat for beaching and picking up firewood and the like. And just good old tough Alaskan boat. You want to see something pathetic? Those are my plums. I think today is October about 13th, something like that. And if you look, you can see my plums look more like olives. You can see them in there. They're in there. But they look more like green olives than plums this year. There they are. And like I said, October 13th, 2021. That's the crop this year. And I don't think that they're going to get much bigger or riper. I don't know. We'll see. Do you like them lower units there, boys and girls? Oh, boy. Lower units. Remember in my last video, I was cutting up some stainless steel drive shafts and shift rods and the like? Well, I need to go through all these. This is not my main pile, understand. This is just some of the lowers I got that I need to go through. And I generally write on them, whether they're good or bad, or put a mark. And also there's a whole bunch of recoil starts. Same thing. Now you look at that and you go, you go, that ain't nothing but a whole bunch of junk. Oh no. Them things got springs and those things got the, the little dog paws, friction discs. All kind of goodies in them. Don't you even think it. There's some good stuff. I just got to get to. There's a hole if you look way back in there beside that blue drum. You see that? Look. You see it? You see it? There it is. There's a whole bunch more pull starts in there. That I got to part out. Or see if they're good enough to put in the main bone pile. 
got a fishing tote full of lower units. Now you see that fishing tote there? I've got a couple of them. And those make good outdoor, well if your shop's big enough, indoor. Those make good outboard tanks. You can make a nice outboard tank out of those fishing totes. And in my neck of the woods, they're everywhere. I even got one around here. It's a half size. It's half that. And that works good for the little... The little cuties. Just thought I'd show you some of the stuff that I got to clean up and get on. Yes, sir. Oh, what to do? There's another one of those fishing totes I was talking about that make good little outboard tanks. You see it's got a drain there on the bottom. So you can drain it. Right now I've got six gallon gas tanks in it. And I'm using it kind of as an engine stand. Oh, what to do? The guy that gave me the 115 Yamaha says it runs. But then one bank would drop out. That he said they've replaced the coils, the CDIs, everything under the flywheel, the flywheel, the carburetors. I haven't even messed with it since I got it. The 70 has been down to see Davy Jones, so there ain't much left of that. Lower unit and some aluminum. That's about it on that one. Unfortunately, oh, what to do? Now, here's a shot. Look way back in there. You see them all? There's two big totes like that full of just parts. You can see the white tote with the engine hanging off of it there. This 30 is one I want to get in real soon. Parts and parts and more. Oh, this ain't all I got. I got more. For sure. Just thought I'd show you this. This part of the bone pile. Bone pile number one. <laughs> It's time to clean the old outboard tank. Because if you're watching my videos a couple ago, I had the old hydrolock oiled up. Four stroker, so I'm trying this super clean foaming spray they sent to me. And I'm going to give it a shot right here. Um, I normally use just the regular old pump super clean and it seems to do fine but this has got the scrubbing bubbles so I thought 
They sent it to me, so we'll give it a fair shot. It looks like it's doing something to it already over there. It's starting to... Alrighty then. Get you over here. You know, this is part of the, the deal, but you can see there's a pair of glasses in there that I dropped. I see something else right there I dropped. Treasures! Oh yeah, it looks like it's looks like it's kind of getting the bulk of the yuck up. Oh yeah. That's all I want, you know. Not like I'm gonna eat off of this thing or out of this thing. But I do after that little incident. I want to get it somewhat cleaned up. Get her somewhat cleaned up. Rinsed out. Whoops, sorry about that. The brush don't get in that corner real good. See that over there? That stuff works pretty good. <laughs> All right. Looking a little better. All right, I'll let that drain out and shop back to bottom. Well, now, don't that look a little better? Yeah. And now we'll get the get it back full. Filling her up.
I did a uh, compression check a while back on this motor but I'm gonna check it again because it's been sitting a while we are on zero on the bottom let's see what we get what do we get what do we get what do we get we got about 95 100 105 oh look it says 105 right there on it okay we're on the middle cylinder we are on zero let's see what we're getting We get 90, 90, 90, 95, 100, about 102. So, we're right in there. We are on zero on the top. See what we get. We get. We are 90, 95, 100, about 102. So they're all running 100 and a little bit, about what I got on there. So we got hot sparky. We got the hot sparky walky. Let's put a little tri flow in there. And we should get a couple boom. It's got these NGKBUHW-2. And you can see they're the Permagap Mercury type. They look brand new. Now what worries, now this motor, I don't know the history of it. I just know it's been badly abused. It's been badly abused. A um, lot of broken plastic, a lot of corrosion, a lot of corrosion on it. And uh, it probably was having problems running, henceforth the new spark plugs. Because the first thing that everybody does for the magic cure, it's got to be them spark plugs. Could it be the water that was in the gas that you were using from last season or three seasons ago? Nope, it's the spark plugs. It's always them sparky plugs. It's always the candles. Replace the candles. She run like new. All right. So, we got a little pop juice in there. There's number one, number two, three. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? A one, a two, a three, three. For you old geezers out there. All right, let's put the spark spider away. And then I'm going to hit the key. And just see if we get a kaboom de boom 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 So, let's see. I got that. No kaboom de boom I did get a little, little something there. Let me give it a little, little gas. There. So, yeah. I don't know if I can do that or not. I can try. Can I do? Nope. Well now, then. Well now, then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where's it at? I don't know what I got on here. I don't know. Let's see, will it? Well, it 
feels like gas is going in this thing. A lot of gas. Make sure it ain't squirting out everywhere. Oh, saw some that time. Wonder where that's coming from. Well, she go kaboom de boom boom boom. Oh, she needs a lot of attention though. And I don't even know if I can get this thing in my tank with that. It's got that doll fin, hydro fin, tilt fin, finny fin fin, I don't know. It's got that on there. And she's a big one, but before I even think about putting it in my nice clean tank, first thing I'm going to do is blow it off with some air. I'll be back. Okay, I took the hydrofins off of there. Now, when these... Now this, this engine right here I got free. Didn't cost me anything. It had been tossed in a guy's backyard. And... Uh, he got on the local swip swap marketplace thing and said, anybody wants it, come get it. And I run a Mercury and this thing's got solenoids and other parts I could use. So I thought to myself, Seth, better get on over there and get them parts. Well, started looking at it and other than the abuse, I thought, you know, this thing might have a chance but when these guys are chasing salmon these commercial guys I want to show you now them salmon they they you know they're out in the ocean they live out there for a few years then they come back and spawn to these rivers and so they'll come into the shallows and a lot of times the fishermen will go into the shallows with these big aluminum welded uh, industrial skiffs I guess I'll call them and they'll go for them salmon. And let me show you what I mean. That's what I mean. See that propeller? That's a salmon chaser. See what that prop looks like? That's a salmon chaser. Them salmon go into the shallows. And the fishermen go after them. Luckily, it's an aluminum prop. So hopefully, the lower unit will be okay. I don't see any oil leaking out of the lower unit. And it does, when I manually shift it, go in and out. That's where the salmons are. Well, now. I was sitting here conversating with old Fret. Having me a cup of coffee, you know. Mainly just looking at the beautiful sunset. Kind of a tranquil moment. You understand? So old Fred speaks up and he says, Hey, Cody Bass. I said, What? He said, What kind of frog am I? I said, Fred, you're a pretty rare frog. You're a polar frog. What you are? Oh, he says. Okay. So I go back to sip my, my Joe, you know. A couple minutes go by, he said, Cody Bass. I said, what, Fred? What kind of frog am I again? I said, Fred, you're a polar frog. You know, like a polar bear. You're a polar frog. Real rare. Oh, all right. Hey, Cody Bass. What, Fred? Are you sure I'm a polar frog? I said, yeah, I know your mom and dad. Fred, why do you keep asking me what kind of frog you are? He says, because I'm freezing my balls off. 
sun's going down behind them spruce trees over there and it that temperature just goes <whistles> so it's probably about 40 maybe 41 something like that right here right now but uh it's getting a little late this one's getting a little long you know what that means we're gonna wrap it up that is one more hack from the kodiak thanks for watching more vids are coming on inside outboards with your host cody bass